Krista Bigcanoe is the Legal Advocacy Director of the Aboriginal Legal Services of Toronto. And I want to thank you for taking the time to come in. Many people are saying, Krista, this is a historic day. Is that how you describe it? Absolutely. It is historic. A year ago, we didn't have the same government or the same hope that this kind of change could occur. That, the commissioners, the five of them, begin their work uh, September 1st of this year. It goes until the end of 2018, so just over two years. And then they're going to have recommendations. There will be an interim report, but the recommendations will come out at the end of that. That's a long time to wait for change. So what can be done now to start that process of change? Certainly, there's a number of things that can be done to start that change. For example, uh, we already know that there's been a number of reports and mm -hmm. research that have made recommendations. The Legal Strategy Coalition had done a report a couple of years ago yeah. when we were calling for the inquiry. And some of the, the some recommendations are as simple as funding transportation. So an example is the Highway of Tears in, um, on the West Coast. If we actually put money into uh, sort of regular transportation mm -hmm. that would ensure that First Nations women traveling that road had opportunity at regular access to transportation, we could prevent uh, a large number of women being uh, who are hitchhiking being yes, taken. And because that is the mode of transportation now yes. for many women is, is to stick out their thumb and to hitchhike. Yes. So that's, that's one example, but there was over 700 recommendations and very little uptake on them. We've heard the ministers today say that they know that there's interim steps that can be done and that the yeah. inquiry alone can't resolve the problems and they're going to be working with their various mandate letters from the prime minister to be keep uh, to keep sort of things in check and to make sure that institutions are doing their part as well. So I think a number of people are hopeful those type of things will happen and that we're not going to sit and wait for the inquiry to finish before mm -hmm. we actually take action. When you talk about institutions, we did hear the ministers say they can be invested Investigated as well. Let's talk yes. about policing. You know that the commissioners, the ministers say, will have that authority to investigate police. How imperative is that in this inquiry? It's absolutely imperative because the families who have been missing their loved ones or where there's a circumstance of murder um, need to have not just assurance but actual action to see that the conduct of police investigations is part of this process. There's something to consider too that not only is the process, uh, is it important to look at the negative aspects of investigations or communications, but also what's working. We can't have solutions or build solutions unless we sort of have a full picture and that will require the participation of various police uh, police authorities mm -hmm. uh, along with the commission. There may be cases where um, information needs to be investigated more in depth and we don't know what the teeth will be that the commissioners have but there is something called and I want to get this right uh, family information liaison units there's 16 million dollars budgeted for that um, they will help family members who have questions about specific cases to pose those questions. Is that a step in the right direction? I believe it is a step in the right direction. There's not quite enough information. I know the minister spoke about it this morning um, and, and with their announcement and discussed the type of uh, what it would look like, like what the teams, the liaison mm -hmm. teams would look like. But again, we don't know with certainty how many uh, women are actually missing and murdered. So 16 million sounds like a lot of money, but it will be used up fairly quickly if you put the appropriate professionals in place to provide the support that's needed such as therapeutic um, family support legal support and so it at this point until we see sort of more what it looks like uh, I don't know what the proper answer is mm -hmm. but I do know it is a step in the right direction final question for you this has been described as a potential healing journey is that the way you see it Absolutely. Uh, Aboriginal Legal Services represents families of missing and murdered Indigenous women. And I think the fact that it was even called and that it's been given this much gravity and that it's, na it's part of a National Inquiries Act process is the first step. I think once the Commission rolls out the proceedings that there'll be opportunities for families to tell truth. And really it's important that all Canadians hear and listen to the truth that's being spoken by these families if we ever want to get to root causes and solutions. I want to thank you for your time. We'll be following this story uh, here on CBC News Network and there will be much more reaction, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you.